What's happening all you Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for my overview of one of my most anticipated releases this year, Echo Lands, Volume 1 from Image Comics. Let's get started. Alright, so this is a book that I have been waiting for a long time to read and I think I first heard about it in 2018 and it started finally coming out in single issues last year in 2021 and then this was solicited for a hardcover and it kept getting delayed and finally it is here so what we're looking at here is Echo Lands volume one so hopefully there's going to be a lot more of these uh, J.H. Williams the third Hayden Blackman W. Hayden Blackman, apologies. Dave Stewart doing the colors. Todd Klein doing the lettering. And these two gentlemen put the book together. They, they're the ones with the stories and the plot. And of course, the artwork is by J.H. Williams III. So if you're familiar with that name, probably means you've checked out Promethea. It probably means that you've checked out Sandman Overture, Batman, and Batwoman. He is one of my favorite artists of all time. Now... This is a widescreen book, so it's a landscape book. This is what the cover looks like. It is art on board, and the book retails for $34.99. Here are all the characters, including our lead character right here, Hope Red Hood. So I am going to be talking a little bit about this wonderful, beautiful book, the journey that is taking place in here, and just showcasing this wonderful artwork. Uh, but again, it is in widescreen format just to make sure. So normally what we have are books in portrait format, you know, like your deluxe hardcovers. This one here is laying down. So in case you don't have room in your library or in case you don't like books to stick out, everybody else, hell yes, let's get this open. Okay, let's crack this book open. Uh, the end paper right here. It's the symbol, it's the symbol of the bad guys in here, The Order, and Echo Lands, book one. We have Dedications here by W. Hayden Blackman for Jim and J.H. Williams III for all these people, thanking them for making this possible. So here we have the co-creators, the co-writers, art and design, Dave Stewart, colors, Todd Klein letters, and Drew Hill doing the additional designs. This is the exact same creative team behind Batwoman, by the way. So if you're a fan of that, oh man, brace yourselves. That's what I was going to say. Kurt Busiek, a man of many words and a talented man at that, doing an introduction. But not just him. There's also a quick little introduction here by Neil Gaiman. And each issue starts off with a quote here, uh, whether they're songs, parts of uh, the Bible, or just... Uh, from books. Then you have the cover with the title Echo Lands number one. So this collects all six issues of Echo Land and it's all done in this widescreen format and I'm sure you're probably tired of me saying that but I have to stress that for people that are going to be confused. And, uh, and speaking of confusion I will say that it is a little confusing to jump in here not knowing exactly what is going on and that's okay. So I'm going to just give you a quick synopsis. So we have this character right here. This is Hope Red Hood and she is a thief and she has stolen something from this wizard um, in this particular world let's just call it echo lands because i'm not sure if they even say exactly what this world is not that it even matters but she's running from all the goons that are trying to chase her down through the city and right off the bat you can tell the different art styles that are going through here the different architecture this world seems like an amalgam of Fairy tale, video games, toys. Wouldn't it be awesome if it's like the twist of that Twilight Zone episode? You're just reading about a bunch of toys. Oh man, I'm. So, uh, I hope that's not what's really going on. Uh, and then you meet this character right here. This is Core, who's like her best friend, her slash her lover, and he's also a thief. So she has taken this particular item from this powerful wizard, and they're trying to get this item back. So Core. Helps her escape, but then she unleashes this power. 
It's when she's tapping into the red. Now, the red could be the cloak. The red could be blood. You can find out for yourself. There are little clues leading into where it's going. So it is violent. This book is rated mature for a reason. Because you're going to see beautiful art like that. So we take the characters back to their fortress right here where a bunch of thieves are hanging out. So you get to meet characters like Deva, uh, characters like Rabbit, Rose. So more thieves. And then the wizard's daughter... Uh, what is his name? Taros uh, Demon comes in and starts annihilating all of these thieves. So it's up to our character here, Hope, to get them out of this situation. Each one of them drawn with a unique style. And at the end of each chapter, at the end of each issue, we have this Soothsayer. This right here is the Oracle of Echo Lands. Kind of gives you a glimpse as to what the next issue is going to be about. Each issue ends with, this is really cool. It's like a magazine. It's called The Echo, the magazine for the open-minded. And it starts off with an interview with Taros Demon, the, this wizard. And he talks about pretty much... It's more like an interview and it's more... It, it definitely helps with the world building. And I like that. I like that things like this are thrown in there. There's a little comic strip in the back with ads. So you kind of get a sense of what exactly this world is like. Now, it's not really until the second issue that you find out who... Here, let me skip some of this because I don't want to spoil that part. These characters are that are following Hope. Obviously, they are a group of thieves. But this is a really cool way of getting to know each of these characters. Kind of reminds me of, like, uh, Terminator 2. It's a little robot that's scanning them. Or how, like, the Guardians of the Galaxy were introduced in the movie. Gives you their name and their species. So, for example, here you have species human, male, homeland, Nazul Islands, maybe. So, it introduces us to, char to these characters, and each one of them has a different art style. For example, the character right here, uh, he's from Old Chicago, but he really looks like a Dick Tracy piece of art, one that could have been drawn by Chester Gould. And I like that about this book. So, it's an amalgam of just these different art styles, these different characters, all running away from this danger that Hope kind of put them in because she's stolen this artifact. And you don't really get to find out what that artifact does and what it means until about the third issue. And speaking of third issue, this one is so awesome where they go and get some help and they seek out Romulus, this character right here, who's like a deity, is a god. And whose art style do you channel when you think of gods? Jack the King Kirby. Look at that. That is gorgeous. And then you have the Frankenstein monster with a vampire right here. So there are fairies, werewolves, each of them with a different art style. Am I selling you on this yet? Because holy crap, this is such an amazing book. Um, the one thing I will say though, it's that it moves really fast for six issues. I read this twice just to absorb the beautiful artwork, but also make sure I didn't miss anything. I do appreciate the interviews in the back and all the little things at the end of each issue because they do help with this world building just wish there was a little more because the the flow just goes too fast oh man let me get to i think the fifth issue is where it happens where the stories kind of split up so along the way some of the friends end up dying some of them end up getting lost and one of my favorite characters shows up i think in the third issue but is really come right here yes this artwork, making sure, because this does have mature content, including sexual content. But here we have this character, this giant robot that looks like a Shogun warrior, Messenger Z. But he goes into the city that is beautiful. It looks like it's drawn and designed by Mobius. While up here is the story of our characters meeting the Oracle and and a spaceship that looks like an Alex Ross battle of the planets. Gotcha, man. I know. Uh, spaceship design. And it's painted. Holy crap. No wonder these. <laughs> this is something I've heard about since 2018. So this book must have been a feat to get together. But just the designs, the characters. Oh, it's so good. And just the gorgeous paintings that come from time to time. Of course, Dave Stewart supplying a lot of the colors here. But even J.H. Williams III doing some of its his own coloring. We even have some Kirby Crackle. Ah, so awesome. But... If you've not heard about this, I didn't want people to sleep on it. It's definitely a book I've been looking forward to reading. It is finally in my hands. I got to read it twice. And what a beautiful book. 
and um and it's okay if you've read this and you're like what the hell is going on it's okay to be lost not everything is explained but you don't have to be spoon-fed that's something i've always said about writers like jonathan hickman or grant morrison you know they don't really spoon feed you the amount of details you will get there just get thrown into the middle of the story uh, the other thing I was going to say, sometimes the panels are a little hard to follow when... Let me see if I can find an example. Okay, I'll just use this as an example. So traditionally, our eyes follow graphic novels, you know, left to right in the American format, the Western format, that is. And, you know, you go one, two, three, four, and you know how to follow the panels. However, I missed this, and I was like, what's happening here? Because I was going back and forth in the pages, right? I was going bam, 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 then see that it was a connecting panel. I'm an idiot, so don't make that mistake. Make sure you're looking at the picture that's connecting everything together in the middle. Um, whereas this is just one flow. And that happens from time to time, especially when you have something like this. This beautiful, masterful piece of art. Um, as far as the extras in the back, there are all kinds of extras, including the textless covers and how each of these pictures are drawn. By the way, uh, this is the daughter of Taros, but she doesn't really have a name up until about the fifth issue you find out what her name is. And I think it's through those interviews. So don't skip on those interviews just because you see a bunch of text. And here we have the sounds. This is the, uh, the soundtrack that J.H. Williams was listening to while drawing these pictures. So awesome. The variant covers all the way back here on chapter two. And as the chapters move on, you can see exactly how much that playlist grows and grows. Let me see. See what I mean? From just a couple pages with chapter one, we get like four pages there. So there's all kinds of artists that help out with variant covers. And I'm glad that they include the entire play. Holy crap. Okay. No, that's a different one. <laughs> yes, I love this character right here. Reminds me of those Shogun warrior characters. But each character, like I said, is unique in their own way. Let me get all the way back here so you can see some of the... I'm not going to flip through all of those, but so you can see the art process. Oh, look at that. It's so beautiful. I think even back here you can see the stuff that J.H. Williams painted himself, if I'm not mistaken. So there is violence and there is some sex... Ah, right there, like the Oracle. So the Oracle stands out. You have characters in black and white. You have characters in finished inks. Oh, it's such a good freaking mix of art. And only a handful of people can do this. This is what the cover looks like. So it's the cover for this. And then the bios on the creators. And as far as the binding, you do have sewn binding. And there it is at 272 pages. What are you waiting for? Fans of art, fans of crazy stories, go check this out. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this deluxe edition hardcover, these landscape books. I love them. From Image Comics. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking it up. If you had no idea this was even a thing. Uh, if you're a fan of Batwoman or Promethea or Sandman Overture, then you need to do yourself a favor and check this out. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Ring that bell for notifications. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. <laughs>